Bless the Lord. Why don't we put our hands together and thank God for another privilege, another opportunity to come to this place and worship him. God has blessed us with a plethora of visitors today. Why don't we stand to our feet? We welcome the Mississippi Delta to the house. Amen. Thank God for another privilege. He is, he is God all by himself. The psalmist would say it this way, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So we're in his house today. Let's come to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus the Christ.
chapter and the 19th verse. Are you finding it? I'm glad to be in a place where people are excited to serve the Lord. I hate to walk up in a church where they're down in sorrow valley and climbing up the rough side of the mountain. God has given us his grace and his favor where we can do anything. And through him, through him, that's how First United came to new beginning. It wasn't a bus driver. It wasn't a bus. It was God's grace, his favor. So right now, remembering my, my afflictions and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul had them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall, my mind therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning, great is our faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said my soul. Therefore I will, I have, I will, I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. For a moment, lend me your ear. And let's go to God with humble hearts, open minds, looking at the bright side and thanking him for his favor. If you bow your heads, oh Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day in this life and being at New Beginnings. Just the name New Beginnings give you excitement to know that God is alive. Oh God, we thank you for forgiving us for our sins. We thank you for your son Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. Because if it wasn't for our Savior, Jesus Christ, where would we be? Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we ask you to make sure that our hearts are clear, our minds are clear. Make sure we know the plan of salvation. So we confess with our tongues today, Lord, that we're sinners. And we ask forgiveness of all our sins. And we believe that Jesus Christ, our Lord, died on the cross to save us from our sins. And he went to a place. He went to a place that he prepared for us. A place is called heaven. And Heavenly Father, we wait. We look. We're excited every day to know we have an opportunity to go to heaven. Don't, don't get it confused. Don't get it confused when you get it confused. You worry about the politicians. You worry about the bombs going off. The God that I serve can stop every bomb in its track immediately with just a thought, just a whisper. Oh God, thank you for being the God that you are. A God that is permanent. We don't ever have to worry about our God wavering. We don't have to worry about our God leaving us. We don't have to about worry about if our God can heal us. We thank you for your healing powers. We thank you for your favor. And we thank you for your grace. How did we get here? It's all because of your grace. 
I was told to keep it short and tight. Yeah. It's hard to keep it short and tight when God has done so much for me. Oh God, I could not even start telling you all the blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon me. Oh Lord, I thank you for my, my grandmother. Oh yeah, I gotta say something about my grandmother. Because she showed me what love is. And I tell you little kids, call your grandmother. Just tell her three words, I love you. And that will make her day. Heavenly Father, keeping it short and tight, we love you, we need you, and we trust you. And you, we know that you'll be there forever and ever. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. assembled here this morning. We accept those gracious words of welcome and we're glad to be here. Jay Way on the xylophones, and I will, and I just want to praise you on the steel drums. Thank you. 
up this morning and gave us a brand new day. If the wind never quit blowing and the dark clouds always cover the sky. If the billows never quit with
fire. And it wasn't the alarm clock that woke you up this morning. It was God that gave you one more. Even 600 miles away, God has given you one more Sunday day. God has given us another privilege. He is here. He's here. You better not let him pass you by. He's here. He's given us one more, one more, one more, one more. If he doesn't give us another one, we thank God for this one. He's given us to it. We have something to shout about, I tell you. Because we didn't wake ourselves up, God gave us one more. We better understand, we better realize that it's not because of our degrees, it's not because of our education, it's not because who we were born to, what neighborhood we grew up in, it's only because of God's amazing grace that he's given us one more chance. And young people, don't wait till you get older, appreciate him. Because you don't have to get old. God has given you one more opportunity, one more chance. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm appreciative. If, I, if you don't see me anymore, just know that God has given me this moment. And I'm glad about it. God has blessed us again. And we just thank him. There's no God like our God. Songwriter said, I, I've searched the world over. And there's none like him. He said he went up to the highest mountain and discovered there's none like him. He went down to the deepest valley and discovered there is none like him. There's nobody like our God. He has blessed us again. God has tremendously blessed us. We're breathing on our own. Our muscle is pumping blood to every extremity of our body. Most of us jogged in here. We just didn't walk in here. Let me tell you, God, we serve as an awesome God. Matter of fact, he's not a awesome God. He is the awesome God. He is God all by himself. And just in case you didn't know, he wasn't elected God. He wasn't selected God. He wasn't voted in as God. He just always is God, and he always will be God. He is God all by himself. Hallelujah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? The one who keeps us and blesses us and, and molds and shapes our lives and gives us traveling grace and gives us mercy we don't deserve. He is the awesome and the amazing God. I want to thank this cavalry of people who have sang for us today. Thank you for, for giving us a glimpse of what heaven would look like. All different nations, all different tongues, all different states. Thank you so much that you have ushered us into this presence. And for that, I'm thankful. Are you glad about it? Oh, the God we serve is such an awesome God. I'm just glad about it. I'm glad about it. He has dressed up dust today. He has, he has dressed up dust. And I'm, I'm glad to be God's chosen dressed up dirt. Yes, we serve the awesome and the amazing, amazing God. Hallelujah. He's just God. You can't really comprehend him. He's, he's just God. You can't really, the only vision we have of him is who Jesus is. He's, he's just God. Hallelujah. I want to thank these youth and young people for leading us in, in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I oftentimes say that um, whenever, whenever our youth and young people present, it's a shame that ABC, CNN, and NBC are not present because we're just so proud of the young people at the New Beginning Church. And they have done an excellent job of being focused and made me want to play just a little bit. But Sister Davis told me to sit in that corner and just observe. <laughs> And I do what I'm ordered to do. <laughs> Amen. Bless the name of Lisa. So we, we've heard from our youth and our young people. We, we've heard from the First Baptist, First United Baptist Church of Indianola, Mississippi. We've heard from this dynamic combined choir. And I just want to announce to you today, it's preaching time. It is, it is preaching time. It is time to... 
for the man of God to stand and proclaim the word of God. Amen. At about, about, about nine years old, my grandmother lived on Linbar Street across the street from this family that was very disciplined, the Wilson family. I got to know four of their 28 children. Come on. I got to know four of their, four of their children, and, and God has, has blessed this family to be a family of purpose, a family that's spiritual, and a family that has been reared up the proper way. I used to stand at a distance and look at our preacher today. Very mild-mannered, very absolute, very kind, a man of God. And as the people say, you could tell that something was different. And not only is something different, he is a man of God who, he and his wife are the epitome of marriage. And they are great examples to the Sunflower County and the Mississippi Delta. He has, I couldn't find my report card I just came to the conclusion, look at God. Maybe I didn't need to find it. But when we moved from Belzona, Mississippi to Indianola, he was my seventh grade teacher. And he still today looked better than I look. He pops up and pops down. I, I noticed we were walking up the stairway yesterday. He didn't even have to grab the handle. I said, when I get like that, I'm going to be like that. <laughs> people, people have said that um, we look like relatives. Well, we both have been by cavalry. <laughs> You'll get that when you get real spiritual. We, we both look like we've been by, by cavalry. And so he has a great reputation in the community, and he has drawn all of these people from the Mississippi Delta 600 miles away to worship. And let me tell you, you have to have a good reputation for people to follow you. Because if you're leading and no one following, you're just taking a walk. I want to say to the people of the Mississippi Delta, thank you for not allowing my friend to take a walk. Thank you for your stand to your feet and welcome my teacher, my friend, the dynamic pastor of the First United Baptist Church of Indianola, Mississippi. Let the church say amen. amen. We thank God for his goodness. Amen. Amen. And we thank Pastor Davis. We thank New Beginnings. We thank First Lady Davis. Carol. We just want to thank all of you for your presence here on this Lord's Day. It is good for us to be here. Bow your heads with me for just a word of prayer. Merciful and almighty God, our Father, maker of all mankind, 
I'm the giver of every good and every perfect gift. Lord, we come right now, Father. Thanksgiving in our hearts. Jesus on our mind. And humility in ourselves. Lord, we thank you. Because what you've done for us, you didn't have to do. So we thank you right now, Father. Father, we need a blessing. I pray that you won't let us come all up this way and leave without a blessing. Bless us right now, Father. Use us to your glory. Father, you know my heart. And so I pray right now that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart let them be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, my strength and you are my redeemer. Amen. 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 And thank God. Thank you, Pastor Davis. Thank you all for getting the wheels from under this so that I could appear to be a little taller. <laughs> and yet, I may not be tall enough. But we are blessed to be here. I want to ask, you see some members back here of First United, we're going to ask them to stand. We're going to ask those of you in the audience if you would stand. Amen. And I want to say thank God for you this morning. For supporting us and as the preachers say, not allowing us to just take a walk. We have choir members up here, and we have ushers out there. We have one of our deacons out there, and uh, we have the young lady who made it possible for all of us to get here in the same vehicle. We're going to ask uh, Sister McGee if she would stand. Uh, Now, she had some help, and Sister Beeman, yes, due to a funeral, could not be here. Um, but we are truly blessed to have uh, young adult ministry, YAM, serving at First United Baptist Church of Indianola, Mississippi. And we thank God for them. I want to thank the pastor for his hospitality. Amen. Uh, they, they wanted to do more than they did. They met us out at the mall yesterday and, and brought us back here and uh, gave us a brief tour of the, of the facilities. And uh, they took us to a room and opened up a door and I think he called it in a, a, it was water with fish. <laughs> and behind that door, there was the ability for young people and others who worked with them to take fish and water. And through that process, grow vegetables. They took us and opened up another door and I saw some uh, 3D printers. I know that's what they were because my grandson has one. But I saw several of them in this room and they allow young people the opportunity to 
experience technology at an early age. Yeah. Yeah, they're making 3D models and uh, providing sensors with those models and uh, devices that will allow them to stop without running into a wall. The same technology we have in some of our cars that allow us to uh, ride around without a driver. Yeah. Young people are experiencing it at a young age. They open up another door and some of the instruments they have behind that door we saw out here. Yeah. But there were keyboards and there were drums and there were guitars and, and there were uh, many of them which will allow many students at one time to take advantage of the training that is provided by Sister Carolyn Davis. Amen. And I discovered that that's what they're doing here at New Beginnings. They are opening up doors. And I want them to be encouraged to just keep on opening up doors. Because behind every door, there was an opportunity and a privilege for young people to get involved and in a way that their lives will almost be guaranteed to be productive. So keep on opening up, up doors. And I know you're going to have some naysayers and some folk who are going to tell you that it's not going to work what you're trying to do. But I want you to be just like Nehemiah. Uh, just tell them I'm on the wall. I'm opening up doors. I'm doing a good work. And I can't come down. So I want them to be encouraged. And I don't know why he invited this old preacher. to come here and try to minister on this day, but I'm here. And since I'm here, let me share a word with you. Good to see some Sunflower Countyans and Indianolians who didn't ride the bus with us who live here in Houston. I almost shouted when I saw them coming in. Glad to have you with us. If you would look with me in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. John, chapter 6. Our reading commences at the 11th verse. It is a familiar passage of scripture, so I'm going to read just a minimum number of verses. And beginning at verse 11, we hear these words. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. And I want to talk to you this morning, this morning from a subject that says there's a lesson in the leftovers. All right now. Yeah. 
There is a lesson in everything that God does. There is a lesson in every word of God. But this morning we want you to note the lesson found here in this text. The lessons in the leftovers. Now I'm reminded of a bygone day. A, a day when mothers all had a motto. And their motto was this, waste not want not. Your mother, those of you who are old enough, your mother and my mother, your grandmother, some of you, uh, they, had, they had to become master chefs. They didn't have much to work with. Our, our homes didn't have a lot. And in my daddy's house, there weren't 28 of us. But there were 12 mouths to be fed. And so my, my mother had to have some special talent in the kitchen. She was a master chef. Uh, they, they knew how to mix prayer with preparation. See, it ain't about what you got. It's about what God can do with what you got. And these mothers, they knew how to add some prayer into whatever it was they were preparing. They, they knew that God would supply all of your needs according to his riches. They knew that God was able. Uh, he, he will give you bread when uh, you're in a place of hunger. Yes. He, he will give you water where uh, there, there is no water. Yes, God can provide all of our needs yes. if we would just let him. Yes. When, when they mix prayer with preparation, uh, they, they took day-old bread. They, they took some stale bread that had it been left up to me, I would have just thrown it out. Yeah. But they, they would take that bread and they would turn that day old stale bread into butter rolls. Yeah. Master chefs. Yeah. They would take yesterday's rice. Yeah. The rice that you didn't want no more. And they would serve it today as rice pudding. Yeah. They, they would take chicken. Uh -huh. Ain't going to be too many times that you got some leftover meat. But, but, but just in case you had a little leftover meat, more than likely it's going to be chicken. Because that's about the most of what we had out on the yard. And they would take that chicken. And the chicken would become chicken dumplings, chicken pot pie, chicken noodle soup, a meal in a minute with a chef touch in it. Uh, they must have read this text this morning uh, where, where Jesus took a little, a, a lad's lunch just two fishes and, and, the, and the Bible say fishes they weren't even of the same type one might have been a cat and another might have been a brim but they weren't neither of the same type but Jesus took two fish and five barley loaves 
five biscuits. He prayed about it. He mixed prayer with preparation. And he blessed it. And he fed the entire crowd. The Bible says 5,000 men aside from women and children. And then he told them, take up what remains. Say the leftovers. And, and I believe this morning that there is a lesson that we can learn from the leftovers. Pray with me this morning, if you will. Now the crowd, like they frequently did in that day, the, the crowd had gathered. Whenever Jesus made an appearance, crowds of people would gather. And, and when the crowd gathered, uh, uh, Jesus saw the crowd and, and Jesus seeing them had compassion yes, yes. He, he saw their number yes. he, he saw their needs yes, right. he, he saw that it had become late in the day and it was at the time when men ought to have received a meal yes. And in his compassion, he put a question uh, to the disciples. The Bible says he said to Philip, said, Philip, where can we buy bread? Jesus already knew what he would do. But when, when Jesus, when the Lord asked a question, it gives us opportunity to get involved with what God is doing. Where can we buy bread? He wanted to know from Philip, what can you do? What will you offer in this situation? How can you help in this circumstance? New beginnings. Uh, that's my question to you this morning. How can you help in this circumstance? They didn't call on you to preach this morning, but there is something that you can do in this circumstance. You didn't have to lead the, the prayer this morning, but there is something that you can do in this circumstance. There's something that you can do to lift up the name of Jesus. There's something you can do to let somebody know that God has done something in your life. What can you do? What will you offer? What will you give unto the Lord? There is a lesson here this morning in the leftover. Now listen, if you will, Bethesda, this place where they were camped out, uh, this was Philip's hometown. It was, it was a mountain where in, uh, uh, that, that Philip uh, had been brought up and grew up in. The, the, the place where they were situated was Philip's old stomping ground. Now, I'm going to say new beginnings. We are in Houston today. Uh, and uh, should we get hungry while we're in Houston? Should we have a need while we're here at Houston? In Houston, if anybody can tell us where to find what we need for our problem, it ought to be somebody here at new beginnings. Somebody's hungry. If, if there is a, a, a storefront where we can get a sandwich, you ought to know new beginnings. If, if, if there's a place where a, a restaurant, uh, the greasy spoon or whatever uh, you, you frequent, if, if, if there's somebody here gets hungry, new beginnings ought to know how to tell us where to go. Notice if you will, the Lord 
He does not ask Philip, and he does not ask the disciples uh, to solve the problem. Yeah. He, he does not ask us to heal the sick. He does not ask us to cure diseases. He does not ask us to uh, uh, solve the problem, but uh, he, he, he expects us to get involved. Yeah. You can't heal the sick, but you ought to be able to pray. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't uh, cure diseases, but you ought to be able to exercise a little faith. It is the Bible say the fervent prayers of the righteous will avail, will avail much. And when you can't solve the problem, you ought to be able to pray to God that he will step in. Somebody here this morning ought to know that there is no problem that is too hard for the Lord. And so we ought to be able to exercise some faith and, and bow down ourselves and pray to the Lord that somebody might receive a blessing. But let me tell you, the disciples had a problem. And, and most of us have that same problem. We are so busy looking from a physical perspective. And when we're looking from a physical perspective, the problems are always too hard. Yeah, yeah. Looking from a physical perspective, we, we are limited in what we can do. Yeah. Uh, looking from a physical perspective, we're going to always end up on the short end of the stick. makes us skittish. It, it makes us standoffish when we feel like we don't measure up to the task. That we don't have enough for what it is that needs to be done. So Philip answered Jesus, eight months of wages is all that we have here in the bag. 200 pennies worth is all that we have. And what are these among so many? He, he was limited in what he could see. But uh, it is, uh, it was not enough what they had in their possession, but what you have with what Jesus can do is always more than enough. Andrew said to Jesus, there is a lad here uh, with uh, two fish and with five loaves. Uh, but I don't believe that it's, a, it's enough. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that it'll accomplish what we need to do here. But if we look this morning with a spiritual eye, if, if we look this morning with a eyes of God and from the word of God we'll find out this morning that I can do and you can do and we can do all things through God who strengthens us we look with a spiritual eye we'll, we'll know that my God is able he can do anything but fail if you look with the spiritual eye, you'll find out this morning that nothing is too hard for the Lord. So this morning, let us learn to look with spiritual sight. If, it, uh, if, if, it be, if it's because uh, we are limited by what we can see, we do absolutely nothing. Limited by what we see the progress of the church gets stagnated when we're limited by what we can see our spiritual strength uh, gets weak our uh, faith uh, dwindles when we look from uh, on the basis of what we can see 
the, the lessons this morning from the leftovers yes. is that we walk by faith yes. and not by sight. Yes. The lesson this morning is that uh, faith without works is dead. Uh, we can't just go around talking about having faith. We have to be able to step out on faith. We have to be able in faith to let God work through us. We ought to learn this morning that man's extremities is God's opportunity. God's strength is made perfect. The Bible say, in my weakness, God is strong. When I can't do, God can. And all I have to do is rely on him. What I, what I like about the leftovers, what I like about uh, this experience that I'm getting from this message this morning, is that uh, uh, leftovers are better when they're served the second time around. Somebody this morning ought to know that butter rolls taste better than biscuits. They're better served the second time around. Pudding, uh, rice pudding is better than just plain old rice. It's better when it's served the second time around. Leftovers, leftover hamburger that has been changed to meatloaf. It gets better the second time around. And that's what I like about Jesus this morning. Working for Jesus. Every day gets sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus. Songwriter say, I love him. I love him. I love him more and more. Jesus said that he will keep me. He's the one that I adore. Jesus said uh, he would save me. Uh, I want to say that he is the one um, that I'm looking for. Um, every day with Jesus uh, is sweeter than uh, the day before. Uh, I want to tell somebody this morning that, uh, that Jesus uh, uh, will keep you. Uh, Jesus uh, will provide for you. Jesus will lift you up uh, whenever you're falling down. Uh, I hear Peter saying this morning, uh, uh, Peter discovered um, uh, the last lunch. Uh, uh, it was Peter who said to Jesus, we got just two fish uh, and we got five loaves of bread. Uh, uh, it was Peter who said to Jesus, uh, this is not much uh, in this crowd. Uh, but listen to me, church, this morning. The disciples did what they could do. And then Jesus told them, now, now that you've found the last lunch, now that you've done what you can do, tell me to sit down. Make them to sit down on the ground. New beginnings, I've come to tell somebody, when you've done all that you can do, you can sit down and put it in Jesus' hand. When you've done your very best, sit on down and put your problem in Jesus' hand. That problem, that's what Sister Marshall saying. That problem that I had, and I just couldn't seem to solve. I tried and I tried, and I just got deeper involved. But I turned it all over to Jesus, and I stopped worrying about it. I want to tell a new beginning. If you put it in God's hand, if you put it in the Lord's hand, you can stop worrying about it. If you put your problem in Jesus' hand, you can stop worrying about it. I turn it over to the Lord. 
And he worked it out. He worked it out. He turned uh, that fruit, uh, that two little fish and uh, five loaves of bread uh, and fed a multitude. Uh, he worked it out. And, uh, and after he got through working it out, uh, the Bible say they had uh, 12 baskets of fragments uh, that were left over. Uh, 12 baskets of fragments. Uh, I don't know what Jesus was planning to do with it, but they had something left over uh, for the next time around. Uh, when you get through uh, trusting in the Lord, uh, when you get through putting your problem uh, in God's hand, not only will you have what you need for right now, but you'll have what you need for the next time. God can work it out. God can do anything, anything but fail. He's a problem solver. He is a God of all power. He is a God of all creation. He is, I heard the psalmist say, my father is rich in houses and in land. He can give me whatever I need. God's got it. He has what I need in the palm of his hand. Just ask him and he will provide all that you need. There's a lesson here this morning in the leftovers. I want to tell you new beginnings. We can stop trying to do on our own. When all we have to do is bring our situation to Jesus. Bring our crisis and our problem to the Lord. And leave it in his hands. And he's able to solve. He's able to deliver. He's able to bring you out more than a conqueror. We close this morning. We just want somebody to know that the Lord is able. Put what you have in the Lord's hand and watch Him work. Let Him solve your problems. Let Him lift your burdens. Allow him to carry your heavy load. He's able. Not only is he able, but he's willing. The, the word of God said, behold, I'm standing here knocking. And I'm waiting on somebody to just open up the door. And if you'll open up the door, the Lord will come in. Say, I will sit down, I will sup with you, and you can sup with me. I'll help you in your circumstance. I'll help you in your dilemma. All of your trials and your tribulation, the Lord is able. Thank you. Thank you. And we pray that God will bless and keep you. And at our church, after the sermon is preached, there is an opening of the door and an invitation to discipleship. And just in case somebody this morning has not a church home, I don't think the pastor would mind if this old preacher would just announce an open door and invite you to come by letter or by Christian experience, or as a candidate for baptism, if you're here and you can believe God's word, we invite you to come. Come while the blood is running warm in your vein. Come while you still have time.
thank God again for the men of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He has, he has blessed us, us today through the word of God. And we're just so, so glad about it. Even the bus driver having church on Sunday. Amen. Give the bus driver something. Good God Almighty. Even the bus drivers clapping unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing God. God has, has tremendously, has tremendously blessed us. Thank you, Pastor Wilson. Thank you for many, many years of good, wholesome integrity and being a great role model for those of us who are watching. Even if you didn't know it, you are a great role model. Amen. And I want to thank God for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He even doesn't know that even how he deals with his wife taught me how to deal with mine. <laughs> now let me unpack that. How he ministers to his wife. How he treats his wife well. Has shown me how to minister and treat my wife. 